my name is Ann Harder. Welcome to the 74th Annual Children's Concert Series. Throughout this series, we've been introducing you to the instruments of the orchestra. Maybe you have seen one that you'd like to learn to play one day. In this last episode, we will be seeing each of these instrument families collaborating together. In this episode, we will also be introducing a new musical family, the human voice, in the form of a choir. Let's jump in and hear from some conductors about what it's like to collaborate with large ensembles such as orchestras and choirs. Hello everybody, my name is Stephen Hyde and I'm Director of Orchestras at Baylor University. And I'm here with my good friend and colleague, Dr. Lynn Gackle. And it's a pleasure to be with you. I am Lynn Gackle and I'm the Director of Choral Activities here at Baylor University. And it is a pleasure to share this time with you. Well, we are conductors and we have so much fun leading our groups and so if you come to see a concert and you see a conductor up there, we want to talk a little bit about what we're doing. And to do that, we're presenting two pieces today. The first is so beautiful. It's such a wonderful opportunity for the orchestra and the choir when we get to play and sing together. So, Dr. Gagel, maybe you'd like to talk about that first piece. Sure. That first piece is See Amid the Winter Snow. It's such a beautiful carol. And I think that this is one that literally the orchestra sets up a beautiful picture in sound. If you can imagine the snow on a beautiful uh, field, and it's so peaceful. You have the wind chimes that start, and the harp. And then all of a sudden the voices ease in with this beautiful text. And I think it's one of our favorite ones that the choir sang that year for Christmas at Baylor. You know, and it's, it's a high point for the orchestra. Anytime the orchestra gets to add a choir and to collaborate with voices, it's just so beautiful and so special. And that particular piece for me, and I think for many people, is just so lovely and it brings up those feelings that you have in your heart that you may not even know are there, but all of a sudden, you know, they talk about music as the, the uh, language, the universal language, and I think that's what it is. We, you could take people from around the world and let them hear that piece, and it, every one of them would just be struck by how beautiful and really emotional it is. Indeed. You know, the, as I said, the orchestra sets that, that scape. It sets that mood. And you're right, they don't need to even hear the words to understand the peacefulness and the tranquility, the quietness of that piece and how it starts. Yeah, and it's, it's, nobody really understands how this works, but we are just drawn to this music and, and I think the fact that this is so peaceful and so tranquil is something that everybody needs in their life. You know, we get enough of, of the hectic activities and, and sometimes stress and all that, but just to relax and hear the beauty of the, of the quietness. Exactly. When the voices start to come in, you know, it's, it's sort of a unison sound. Everybody's just singing that one melody, and I, I believe it starts with just the, the ladies' voices. So you'll hear the ladies, um, the girls' voices singing the higher pitches, and then, of course, the men's voices coming in in the lower, lower pitches, lower area. And together, there's such a warmth, and then you hear the text. The orchestra and the choir become such a, um, a duet. It's a, they, they join forces and the complete picture, it's a picture in sound. 
and I think that's the reason that the uh, the uh, choirs enjoyed so much working with the orchestra because it starts peaceful, but then it just brings this glorious sound toward the end of the piece. It builds. And we have crescendo and and um, the words hail the blessed morn, and it just just vital revitalizes everyone because it's just so uplifting. Well, you know, as a, a conductor, to stand in front of a choir of 120 singers, an orchestra of 80 plus players, is such a, an amazing experience. It's a humbling experience to have all of those people focused on exactly the same thing at the exact same time in creating something so beautiful. Uh, it's an awe-inspiring experience, actually. And I know that the Amundsen piece is something that the orchestra performed. Could you tell us a little bit more, more about that experience? I'm, I'm glad to. You know, it's a totally different mood, isn't it? It's just so much energy and so much fun. And, and life is about all kinds of things. You know, some things where we're very quiet and tranquil and other times where we're, we're just filled with joy and energy. And I think that's what this represents well. You know, an orchestra or a choir or orchestras and choirs together are just this wonderful big team. And, you know, we, we celebrate, uh, you know, a football team or a, a basketball team, but here we might have, you know, 250 people and they're all first stringers. And they all have their own role to play and they know what that is and they've practiced it to perfection and it's just a it's just a wonderful thing to see them all coming together knowing what they have to do and doing it and to bring out that emotion and also just the joy i think that's what music does better than anything else that i know so true and this day and time we need a little bit more of that we do <laughs> we need as much of that as we can get in fact yeah sure so I, I hope the boys and girls sometime will uh, come into a concert and watch the players and watch the conductor and maybe some of them will even become conductors. It's a really fun thing to do and uh, a wonderful way to, to spend your life making music with a lot of people together in this ensemble, this team, this giant team. So true. So if you come to a concert and you see a conductor, you're gonna notice that he's moving his hands and he may have even a stick in his hand, which we call a baton. And what he's doing is showing the tempo and the dynamic, how loud or how soft the music is and other elements and giving that information, but doing it in a way that's silent so that it doesn't interfere with the actual music and the notes and so he or she is doing what we call conducting but it's a silent gestures that tell everybody in the team here's what we're going to do and it's great fun well it's so nice to have dr gackle and thank you for being here and, and explaining what we're going to see and thank you for watching these children's concerts for 2020. we're now going to play some beautiful music for you that we think you'll enjoy thanks for watching
performances may look a bit different now. But we've learned from each of these episodes that music can be made in many different ways with many different instrument groupings and ensemble sizes. We have also learned that the full orchestral ensemble, when we can all be together, is an absolutely thrilling experience. With that, we conclude our children's concert series, and I hope you've enjoyed these close looks at the instrument families of the orchestra. I'm Ann Harder. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.